Hello and welcome to Intern Insights. I'm your host, Dr. Bruce Finkley. I'm the Mass Communication Internship Coordinator here at the University of Montevallo. Internships allow students in all academic disciplines to gain valuable real-world experience, and this web series is designed to highlight some of the interesting things that our MassCom interns are doing. On this episode, I'm joined by Amos Hollenhead, who interned at WIAT 42 News in Birmingham. Amos, thanks so much for joining me. Glad to be here, Doc. So start out telling me what the typical day was like for you as an intern at 42. Where do I begin? Well, uh, I would pretty much come at the station uh, pretty much around 12, 12.30. And from there, there would be some times where I would leave at 7.30 when they had like a little less news stories, and sometimes I would stay all the way up until 12 that uh, that uh, morning, and uh, just pretty much just gather as much experience as I could. And we went from story to story, and I went from you know position to position. I wanted to learn as much as I could from each and every person that was just you know allowing me to shadow them. Uh, I would go and I would ask for you know a photographer or an editor or a reporter or a producer, you know, anything that they was willing to teach me. And I just went around and, you know, I assisted with whatever they asked me to do and, uh, you know, assist in helping the show be a better show any way I could. Awesome. So uh, what made you want to intern at Channel 42? Well, I mean, I was looking for, I really wanted that intern uh, internship experience anywhere and I was just really want to just get my you know feet wet with mm -hmm. being in a professional setting and uh, you know I put in you know applications as many places as I could and before the end of uh, April was over back at a uh, spring semester of this year I had gotten a call from Mrs. Jabro from a uh, WIT 42 and she was very nice and she had talked to me on the phone about having an internship opportunity and if I was interested and I was jumping right on the bandwagon. I would be like, sure, I am definitely interested in doing whatever you have me to do. And she said, great, come by tomorrow. And I was like, okay, <laughs> all right, all righty then. And uh, since then, uh, I met and we was with three other interns and uh, it was just us three. I think it was the fewest number of interns that they have had. And, you know, since that, uh, that May, I've been there ever since. And it's been a wonderful ride and I've learned a lot. Well, and you mentioned the, the fewest number of interns they had. That probably turned out to be a good thing for you because you don't have as much competition. Uh, that, that is true. I remember when I went to uh, interview for my internship, when I interned at Channel 13, um, I was waiting in the lobby, and this other person comes in, and we start talking, and I say, well, what are you here for? She says, oh, I'm here to intern, or I'm here to interview for an internship, and I thought, you're the competition. And <laughs> I, like... At that moment, I was like, I, I thought I thought I'd be interviewing by myself. I had no idea it was a group interview. Mm. And so we went in, and like in my mind, I'm thinking, I have got to destroy her in this interview. I've got <laughs> to make myself look so good. Get your game face. <laughs> yeah, and we walked in, and they were like, well, you, you're both in. And I was like, oh, that's fantastic. That's awesome. And what's funny <laughs> is that she and I ended up becoming like, best friends <laughs> at work and I'm like oh man and there I, yeah there I was thinking I've got to take her down in the inter in the interview process so luckily that worked out pretty good hey. um, so you mentioned that you applied in a bunch of different places yes. but what was the application process like for WIAT well the application process it was just you know coming in and actually having you know experience in you know a wide variety of areas um, you know writing uh, you know, shooting, you know, what are you interested in? And I have basically, you know, I've gotten some recommendations from all of my teachers, including you. And uh, Mrs. Jarbo, the day that I had met her, she was like, what are you most interested in? And I told her I wanted to, you know, be more interested in, you know, like directing and editing. And, and I wanted to be more of like a sports broadcaster. She was like, all right, first of all, let's get your feet wet and let's have you do a little bit of news, and once you do news, then we'll move you to sports. And it was a very great experience for me because she pretty much told me you have to make it, you know, it's what, it's what you make it, like mm -hmm. your internship is what you make it. And so from the beginning process, I just had to have a general idea of what did I want to do while I was there. And, you know, all the experience that I got here really tailored me for a way to get into that internship and basically take advantage of what they was going to teach me. So even though you felt prepared with all the classes that you've had here, 
there's always going to be something that happens in the real world that we can't necessarily duplicate here. I almost said we can't prepare you for, but I feel like we can prepare you. We just can't create that that chaos. So mm -hmm. what are some of the things that happened at your internship that surprised you and kind of caught you off guard? Uh, well, you know, we was in the middle of a, a branding uh, process because, you know, they started off as CBS 42 and when I came in, uh, they became WIT. They was like just in the WIT phase for about two weeks before I came mm -hmm. in. And one thing that's, you know, very, very hectic is adjustment because you don't know how fast it's going to take. And, you know, when you're rebranding a process, you have to get that audience back mm -hmm. that you was when you was, you know, a CBS show. And now that you're a brand new name, you know, a lot of people were more focused, like, how can we get the audience and how can we get more people than what we originally had? So I think just the the overall adjustment period at that time when, you know, we came in as interns, we got to see the full-fledged, you know, changeover of, you know, what's new, what's old, how can we change this, how we can add, subtract, and pretty much, you know, just seeing that whole remarketing and rebranding process was very, very, you know, op it opened my eyes for what, you know, how much a business has to, you know, prepare itself for those types of situations. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was pretty cool. Awesome, awesome. And actually, I, it's interesting that you mentioned their branding because we had their, their logo up for, for just a minute. Can we put the logo back up for us to take a look at? Uh, because when they changed over, I was like, oh, it looks really good. But when I try to read it, I want to read it as WIAT News 42. <laughs> I, I wish that the 42 and the news were, were mm -hmm, swapped. Yeah, because, you know, it, it was like, you know, CBS, you know, because it it's about time mm -hmm. was their original, slo you know, their slogan. But now with this one, it's a lot more crisp and, you know, they were blue, but now they're red because mm -hmm. it stands out a little bit more. And, you know, they just really wanted to get more of a sharper image, mm -hmm. like we're in it for real. We're all in. So we have a new set, we have a new look, and now we want to have not only our, our audience, but we want a new audience as well. So you got the big old WIT, <laughs> you got the News 42, and it's just like, we're here right for you right now. So. so you got to see their brand new set. Um, yeah. What did you think of that? It looks pretty cool on TV. I mean, from I, I saw a video on YouTube from their transition from the old set to the new set, and I was like, everybody was like, just wow, this is so amazing, this is cool, we get to do more stuff. And when I went in there the first time, I was just like, this is home. <laughs> <laughs> you found I, where you belong. I was like, ah, all the all the machinery, all the cameras, all of, you know, the graphics and you know, they got a new storm track weather system where they mm -hmm. just have, you know, pretty much like some good technology all around and you know, you got your green screen and you have another set area where they do interviews and you know, just seeing all that happen, you know, makes you you know, it, it gives you new life because, you know, you have the motivation and now you have the tools to really go out and do what you want to do and make things better. So, so coming back from your internship, and you were interning the, this whole semester, uh, how were you able to apply what you learned at 42 to what you were doing here on campus? Well, I mean, I was, from that experience of just being at the internship, when I came back on campus this semester, and you know, since this is my last semester, I just wanted to do as much as I could just to tell people, you know, do the best you can. Mm -hmm. uh, go out and get those internships, learn as much as you can, because there's not one thing that you learn here that is not gonna be valuable out there in the field. Uh, because the writing, uh, the shooting, the editing, the, the process of knowing how to do all three of those things together are very valuable and people used to tell me the more you know the more valuable you are mm -hmm. so it's just going out there and just staying hungry just staying hungry and being open-minded and you know sometimes you just have to make your own luck in this business and you know when you make your own luck and you have that you know right attitude you know, there's always going to be a door open for you. Exactly and you had the the interesting opportunity to really actually literally leave your mark on their station with their uh, the photo project that they gave you. So yes. talk uh, just briefly about that. Well, I got this assignment right around October and uh, 
they they brought me into the room. Uh, it was uh, Mrs. Jabro and Mr. Andy Caliendo. He was uh, he's the head of uh, the Creative Services Department, and he brought me in. He said, Amos, you know, you've been doing a lot of stuff here, and we want to put you on this big project that we know that we can see you tackling. And I was like, what is it? Well, we want you to go out and take pictures of all the photographers, the anchors, and reporters, and just basically get them in the moment. The moment while they're doing a story, while they're editing a package, while they're doing interviews, whatever you see, try to get it. And mm -hmm. I was just like, when do I start? <laughs> <laughs> just give me a camera and I was ready to go. So uh, my internship advisor, his name is Mr. Uh, James Adams, and he was uh, really encouraging for me. He was like, hey, I got a Canon T3i camera right here, use it and go do your thing. And I was just like, all right, here I go. And since then I've been on uh, different uh, news stories with you know different anchors, getting shots of them. I remember riding around Birmingham with, uh, with a story uh, centered around a homeless uh, shelter mm -hmm. and we went to each and every house uh, that was in the Birmingham area that had you know different pay, uh, different people that were like at homeless shelters and like coming in and out and I was getting that story because we were doing the interview with a guy in the car and I was just in the back just taking photos of them together and when I got back and saw this shot of you know the reporter and the guy bringing out stuff out of his trunk of like clothes and blankets and giving them to this family I was just like all these are great shots that not only says like what WIT does, but just in general, how you know impactful just getting this story out to people can be. Mm -hmm. So, and I was glad to be a part of that and just getting those shots and being able to help out and pretty much brand what WIT is. I, I was really glad to be a part of it. And like I said, it's just sometimes you make your own luck. Yeah. And so I was well, and it's not every intern that gets to you know you could walk back in that door to that station and look up at that wall of all those photographs and go. That, that's my work, I did that. So that is, yeah. that's awesome that you had that opportunity. So Amos, thank you so much oh, no for problem. joining me and talking about your internship Glad and good luck here. after graduation. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> that's all the time we've got for this episode of Intern Insights. If you'd like more information about a MassCom internship, feel free to stop by my office here in the MassCom building or you can email me at bfinkley at Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.